women. Yes. Heavenly Father, be with us and guide us in accordance to your will and faith. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Happy Mother's Day to you. And when I say Happy Mother's Day, I'm not just talking to the mothers. Amen. I like to say Happy Women's Day. Is that all right? Amen. I want to thank God for blessing me with a wonderful wife. I'm here to tell you, I, I, I do not, I tell the brothers all the time, but I don't tell my wife enough, brother, to come how much I love and appreciate her. And how that I could not. Amen. How that I could not do this work without her. Amen. Amen. I come home all pouting and crying and whining and she tells me to fix your face. It's going to be all right. So I want to especially thank God for my wife and thank God for all of the sisters of this congregation. And I know that our hearts are heavy this morning and the passing and the loss of our dear sister, Sister Rosie Butler. But we ought to be celebrating because Sister Rosie Butler lived over 90 years. Amen. And we're so thankful to God that we have had so, someone in such a small stature, but carried a big stick. Y'all know Sister Ro Rosie, but Sister Rosie told the truth. Whether you want to hear it or not. All right? So we thank God for our example. And we thank God for the example of all of our sisters, Amen. especially our older sisters. Amen. Uh, I, I don't want to sit up here and name names, but you know who you are. Amen. Our congregation has been blessed Amen. tremendously uh, by the matriarchs of this congregation who have to keep us and to encourage us. Uh, I can remember when I first came back home uh, from college and uh, we were up and we were just leaving the high school going up to Ferry Hill. And even in that time, I, I had no uh, desires to, to do anything, uh, but I had uh, those who encouraged me and who always uh, spoke with me and just, just supported me. So I thank God uh, for that. And that's uh, truly uh, what I want to briefly speak with you about this morning and how beautiful women are. Yes, sir. You know, when it says that God uh, made things and everything was good, when he made women, it was very good. Amen. 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 Women are, I believe, one of God's most beautiful creatures that he's yes, ever made. Amen. And I say that with all sincerity of heart and we should always uh, be thankful for the women that God has uh, placed in our lives and who has had such an influence in our lives. And when you look at things today, and I, I, I sometimes, uh, I was sharing with the class on yesterday, uh, I, I sometimes get a little bit worried about our generation of women today. Because of so much that's going on in our lives and so much that's going on in the lives of, of young women. And, and I, I, I just think sometimes we need to go back, Brother Connie, to the old paths and how things used to be. Amen. Because when we were uh, uh, rooted and grounded in the Lord, amen, when we do, did things according to God's will, amen, the family was much more uh, stronger than it is today. People, uh, especially women, had more value of themselves than they had today. And that's why I want to call your attention uh, this morning to 1 Peter chapter 3 and the verses 1 through 4. Because I want us to examine from God's word what is it that truly makes a woman beautiful? And young ladies, I especially uh, want you to uh, pay attention this morning because I feel like 
our young women today really don't have a sense of their worth today. And I know the context here in, in 1 Peter chapter 3 is, is speaking to wives, but it's going to give us some insight into what truly makes a woman beautiful. Amen. Is that all right? Amen. 1 Peter chapter 3. If you have it, say amen. amen. The Word of God says in verse 1, Likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your own husbands, amen. that if any obey not the word, they also may without the word be won by the conversation of the wives. Now we need to understand what he's saying here in this first verse is that a, a, a man, a, a husband in this text, it, it's not that he's not going to be converted by truth, because truth is always needed Amen. in conversion. Amen. Yes, but he's talking about the initial influence, the initial influence to, to draw someone to truth. Amen. Amen. The woman can play a very special part in that. Amen. Amen. He's saying that the woman, in essence, has a great deal of influence in drawing her husband to the truth. Yes, sorry. And guess what? She doesn't, watch this ladies, she doesn't have to say a word yeah. to him. Right. Right. Notice that it says that also may without the word right. be won by the conversation Amen. of the wives. Is that right? Yes, Verse 2 says while they behold your chase conversation coupled with fear. And this, this word conversation is, is speaking in respect to all aspects of their conduct, Amen. of their behavior, how they carry themselves, their lives. See, you don't have to say a word. All you have to do is just live the word. Amen. That's right. And you can draw people. Amen. Amen. Remember Jesus said in John 6, 44, no man can come to me except the Father draw him and I will raise him up at the last day and guess what God has used many of beautiful women amen, amen. and when I'm talking about beauty I'm not talking about the outward amen. I'm talking about the inward is that right he's used many of beautiful women to draw many of us are here today because of women who were in the body of Christ amen who was praying for us who were examples to us Amen. Amen. Am I right about it? Yes, sir. Half, uh, I, I would venture to say half of us were here because of a, a, a woman named Sister Tony. Amen. Amen. And I can say many others. Amen. But we have those who have demonstrated in their lives Christ. That's right. Is that right? Yes, we have an example in 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 5 where Paul was recalling the unfeigned faith and a young Timothy. Amen. Amen. And he says, I'm, 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 I'm recalling, I remember your unfeigned faith. But, but guess what? That was the faith that was first seen in your grandmother Lois right. and your mother Eunice. Amen. So in other words, Timothy, you didn't get this faith on your own. You had some, some help. You had some influence. Amen. You had some examples. Amen. Amen. And it didn't mention, notice it didn't mention nothing about his father or his grandfather. That's right. It said his grandmother and his mother. All right. Is that all right? Amen. That doesn't mean that grandfather and father is not important. Amen. Well, teachers. But women have great influence. That's right. right. Yes, Amen. Amen. He says again, while they behold your chase conversation. You see, people don't necessarily have to hear initially. I'm Amen. speaking initially. People don't have to hear a sermon preached in order to be drawn to truth. Matter of fact, it's, it's, it's more readily available, amen, that if they see a sermon in our lives. Because every day that you and I go to work, every day that you and I go out in public, every day that you and I uh, uh, fellowship with our family, amen, we're living epistles known and read of men. And people are watching your life. Whether you know it or not, people are watching you. When you're a Christian, when you're a child of God, Amen. people are watching you and you don't even know that they're watching you. Amen. But they've been watching you for years. Amen. 
And they want to know that this God, this God that you claim that you serve, this, yeah. this Jesus that you proclaim to them all the time, are you really going to live the life that you're claiming? Amen. Or are you a hypocrite? Because people love to point out when you're a hypocrite. Amen. Amen. That's right. Is that right? That's right. That's why the Bible says in Matthew chapter 5 and verse 16, let your light so shine. Yes. Is that right? Yes, sir. People always talk about nowadays, get your shine on. That's the wrong type of shine. <laughs> this is the light you want to shine. Amen. Amen. The light of Christ. Amen. Let your light so shine before men that they may see. Is that right? That's right. That they may see your good work and glorify your Father in heaven. Amen. Is that right? Amen. Understand when we look at this verse 2, while they behold your chase conversation, that the word here, behold, in this context means to inspect or watch intently. In other words, the, the chase conversation, which includes everything she does, All right, amen, was to show the reality and the power of her faith. Understand that it was to show that it had such an influence on her temper, on her words, and on her entire conduct in all respects to show that it was truly from God. Amen. In other words, when, when people know how you were in the past, all right. is that all right? right? Can I say that? Amen. When people know how you were in the past and now, Hey man, you've given your life to Christ. Now you will obey the gospel of Christ. People ought to see something different about you. Right. Amen. Is that right? Amen. And that brings glory and honor to God because they said, well, this person used to walk up and down. They used to be cussing. Uh -huh. Now they, they tempted that. Their words aren't like that. They used to be hot at it. All right. Now they're calm. Right. I want some of that. Right. How did you do that? Is that right? Amen. And sometimes they'll, they'll even test you. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. See how real you really are. Come on. Amen. Right. Amen. Amen. I'm not the only one who's tested day in and day out. Amen. 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 They test you. Amen. And guess what? No, I'm just going to keep it real. We don't always pass the test. Right. Is that right? right? And that's when they say, oh, I thought you were a Christian. <laughs> But they're going to test you. Is that right? Amen. Now, he goes on to say, because he's talking about their chase conversation, but I'm talking about the hasten. He goes on to verse 3 and he says, watch this, because we're talking about what makes a beautiful woman. He goes on to say, who's adorning? All right. Y'all catch that? Who's adorning? Let it not be that outward adorning. All right. Is that right? Is that what your Bible says? Yes, Let it not be that outward adorning of patting the hair and, and of wearing gold and of putting on of apparel. Indeed. And I'm here to say y'all look good today. Amen. Mm. Yes, Is that right? That's right? And he's, understand that Peter here is not condemning looking good on the outward. All right. he's, not, he's not condemning that at all. Amen. But rather, he's, he's saying that that shouldn't be the whole focus well, of your life. Amen. Amen. Y'all know how long it took you to get ready this morning. I don't need to tell you. Is that right? Y'all know how long y'all was in the petition yesterday. Well, Women have just uh, an, an, an innate uh, human nature to want to look pleasing and well, and there's nothing wrong with that. All right, team. Is that right? <coughs> Y'all are stay in a place in a beauty shop for five hours. Yeah. Come on, Tell Your me. appointment's supposed to be at 9 a.m. You don't get out to 7 p.m. Yeah. <laughs> but you don't care. You're going to get that hair done. Is that right? And once you get it done, don't touch me. Don't bother me. Don't, don't let it be raining. <laughs> But it's just a natural desire That's right. in the woman to want to appear well. And when you look at this word, I found it interesting because the question is, 
what is the true and appropriate adorning? And I looked up this word adorning, and it the, the Greek word for this is cosmos with a K. K-O-S-M-O-S. And we have the same word, but it starts with a C, cosmos. And it's speaking to the order of the universe in the world. And when you look at the order of the universe and the world, just when you look at celestial stars and, and things like that, you know that everything is in the universe is well-ordered. Things are not just chaotic. Things are well-ordered. The solar system and how things work. For, when we were in school, when we took science, you ever notice how perfectly in order things are? That's right. Things are just out there happening. This word stands for order. And when you talk about things that are well-ordered, it, it must mean that it's beautiful. Amen. Because when you and I look at the well-ordered uh, celestial things in the universe, when we look at uh, what's well-ordered in nature, it's beautiful. Amen. Isn't it? Yes. Amen. Now, now, understand this. This is the same word where we get our word or we develop the word cosmetics. Right. It takes this well-ordered word, cosmos, and hence the term cosmetics. And cosmetics are used to make things appear well. All right, T. Amen. Don't y'all look at me funny. Cosmetics are meant to make things appear well. Maybe I should move on. Is that right? Is that why we spend so much money on, on Avon and all these other things? Amen. But cosmetics are meant to beautify to make things well, or we call it just makeup, right? The point of what Peter's saying, he's not condemning looking well, but he's saying you have to regulate the inordinate uh, stress on the outward because some of us are so preoccupied with how I look on the outside, and I'm not concerned really at all with how I look to God on the inside. Is that right? You see, I can't depend on Maybelline for my true beauty. Amen, Amen sisters. Is that right? Because that kind can never give you your true worth. Amen. And you have so many young ladies today who are depending on what they're wearing and how they're looking and how their hair is done to determine what they're worth. And God is telling you that that's not your worth. What's inside of you Amen. is truly what you're worth. Amen. But as long as you allow the commercials and all the, 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 the things of this life, all the advertisement and things that tell you that you got to look like this, that you got to wear this, that you got to be this way, that's right. then that's how you'll define yourself. Amen. Are you hearing me? Amen. He says again in verse 3, who's adorning, let it not be that outward adorning. In other words, don't let all the main aspect or all there is about you to be the outward appearing. Because if that's true, then it's not going to be much. Amen. Amen. And I say that with all due respect. It's not going to be much, and watch this, it's not going to last. That's right. That's right. Because all of us are getting older. Yes. This body is going back to which it was yes. formed. Amen. Is that right? Yes. That's why he says in verse 4, as we hasten to our conclusion, he says, but let it be, amen, Come on. but let it be, because he said, hey, I, don't, I don't want you to just value yourself by the external, but let it be the hidden man of the heart. Amen. In other words, let your beauty, let your ornament, let your value be what is inside of you, Amen. not what's outside of you. Amen. Is that right? Amen. In that which is not corruptible. Mm -hmm. You see, when you are, when you and I are on the inside, the inward man, not the outward man, is who we truly are. That's right. Is that right? Yes, sir. Many of us have met individuals who look good. Amen. They sounded good. Right. They had good game. Uh -huh. Is that right, Brother Bates? Yes, we had game, didn't we? Right. You know. 
you wouldn't have been able to get caught up. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Now listen. But the truth of the matter is, it's, it's, it's not about what's, what's outward. The Bible says in Romans 7, 22, Paul speaking, he said, For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. Because what we are on the inside is who we truly are. You ever see someone and you just, they just appear to be so nice and so sweet? Amen. <laughs> Then they turn out to be so. Yes. <laughs> and you say to yourself, how can someone who looks so good, who sounds so good, be so active? I'm not gonna say it. Oh, y'all, y'all get my, y'all get my drift. Second Corinthians chapter four and verse sixteen. The Bible says. But though our outward man perish, is that right? Yet the inward man is renewed day by day. Is that right? My outward man is perishing. My outward man is, is fading away. But who I truly am on the inside, my soul, my spirit is being enhanced, Sister Morel. Amen. And while I may not have the best of clothes, my, while I may not have the best of apparel, amen, my inward man, are y'all, y'all ain't here. My inward man looks good. Is that right? Because it's, it's maturing and growing to look like my father in whose image I was created in. You see, I don't know about, about you. I'm not trying to look like some celebrity. Amen. I'm trying to look like Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm happy with that. Yeah. Is that all right? Yeah. Watch this. Colossians 3, in the verses 9 and 10, says, Lie, lie not one to another, well. seeing that you have put off the old man with his deeds. Is that right? That's what it says. You see, once we became a child of God, once we obeyed the gospel, amen, we are to put off the old man and his deeds. Then it goes on to say, and have put on the what? The new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. You see, we all need to be striving, amen, to look more like Jesus and less like the world. It's a shame that you, when we come around uh, children of God, and we can't tell children of God apart from the world. Yeah. People come as visitors, and they say, well, wow, you know that? That was just, I, I might as well just be outside. All right. Ain't no difference in there. Right. Remember that Christ gave himself for us to purify to himself a peculiar people, yes. amen, zealous of good works. So we need to be peculiar. That needs to be something different about God's children. Amen. That's right. We ought not be looking like what we came from. That's right. Amen. amen. Am I right about it? Yes. Watch this. In other words, while we take so much time and effort, and, and many of us did this this morning, and that's nothing wrong with that, not condemning that, but while many of us take so much time an effort to ensure that we're coordinating. Well, is that right? That's right. Look at y'all. Y'all look so nice. Y'all coordinate everything. Tie the dress coordinates with this and that. Right. While we're taking so much to make sure that on the outside that we're coordinating, we need to, we need to take even more so time to make sure that our inside is being coordinated with God. Amen. 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 Take more time to make sure that this part of your life is looking like Jesus. That that part of your life is looking like Jesus. Amen. Is that all right? Amen. He says, again, but let it not be. Oh, I'm sorry, who's adorning? Let it not be the outward adorning of plaiting the hair and wearing of gold and putting on of apparel. But let it be the hidden man of the heart in that which is not corruptible. You see, what you and I are on the inside will never fade away. Are we getting this? 
it will never fade away. And then he goes on to say, even the ornament of a quiet and meek spirit, which is in the sight of God, a great price. So when we're talking about what makes a beautiful woman, it's not your apparel. Amen. It's not how your hair is. Amen. It's your spirit. And I'm here to testify on behalf of men who are working and trying and attempting to be godly. We're not worried and concerned about how you're looking necessarily. We're more concerned about are you of a meek and quiet spirit? Amen. Are you a God-fearing woman? Amen. Because guess what? All these looks and things, after a few years, that's going to fade away. Amen. Is that right? That's right? I want to know that I have a wife. Watch this. I want to know that I have a wife who's helping me to make heaven my home. Amen. Amen. Young people, when you think about who you're going to marry, yes. pick someone, amen, when it talks about being equally yoked or not, not being unequally yoked, understand that that's talking about you, you need to find someone, amen, even in the church, yeah. because that's not enough to just say, well, he or she is in the church. Yeah. Because we can be in the church, amen, and still be unequally yoked. I want someone who's on the same page as me, who loves the Lord, amen, who's going to tell me like it is no matter what, amen, long as you're telling me the truth. Is that all right about it? But who's going to help me to see Jesus in peace? That's what it's all about. We go into sometimes relationships and marriages thinking, of, you know, well, I want a person that looks like this. I want someone who makes me laugh. And that's all great. But ultimately, what really, what really matters? Can you help me to get to Jesus in peace? When we're going through the struggles, because this life is a struggle. Can, you, can I trust? Amen. That you love God enough to have my back. Amen. And I got your back. Amen. Not with a knife. Well. And stabbing me with it. All right. Amen. Not that, oh, you know, I'm tired of you. I'm, I'm just sick and tired. I, I don't find somebody else. Yes. Have you ever noticed that the vows aren't even said today in weddings? Hmm. These are the things we need to think about. Yes, sir. Even the ordinate ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God, great price. You see, while we want to please our spouses, ultimately and most importantly, we want to please the real object of our affection. Amen. And that's the Lord. Amen. Is that all right? Yes, we want to make sure that we're pleasing and acceptable to Him. Yes. Is that all right? Yes. Because nothing of the outward man can ever substitute for the inside. Right? Are y'all getting me? Amen. Now, I want to look at Luke chapter 1 real quick. I want us to look at this. And I know a lot of times people say, well, you know, we give Mary the blues. We don't give her honor or credit. <laughs> but the Bible does. But the point is, the Bible doesn't say we're to pray to her. Amen. Amen. Is that right? Amen. So we don't go beyond what the Bible speaks of Mary. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. As some people do. That's right. Some people think that Mary has an inside track to Jesus and so forth and so on. But we keep Mary in her place Amen. as God did in the scriptures. Yes, Amen. Amen. But Mary is a blessed woman, I tell you. Yes, Not because I said so, but because the Bible says so. Look at what it says, Luke chapter 1, 
starting with verse 26. Luke chapter 1, starting with verse 26. The Bible says, if you have to say amen. amen. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city in Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou art highly favored. Yeah. Is that right? Yes, Mary, you're highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Now understand that Gabriel's not coming to Mary telling her that she's highly favored, telling her that she's blessed among women because she looks good. Right. Teach. Teach. Amen. Right. He's not coming to tell her that she's highly favored because of what she has on. Amen. That's right. He's coming to tell her this because she's highly favored in, in the sight of God because of who she is on the inside. That's right. Right. You see, we have to learn some inference here. God is not a respecter of persons. Is that right? That's right. That's right. And God, who doesn't look at the outward appearance of man, God looks on the what? The inward part of man. So I know from what God has taught me of how he judges in his word, he didn't choose Mary because of how she looked. It was the person she was. She was pleasing in his sight. And you have to understand something about this. Mary, Mary was highly favored. She was blessed among women. But do you know why she had to be that way? Right. Why God had to choose a woman of this type of sort spiritually? All right. Do you understand the things that Mary would have to endure yes. over the next 33 years? Right. Mary would have to flee for her life Amen. with her baby. Right. Mary would have to endure a lot of ridicule because she was found with child before she consummated her marriage. Amen. You see, she was espoused to Joseph. In other words, that's our word for engaged. Yeah. They were engaged. They wasn't married yet. That's right. That's right. All right? So she was found with child being espoused. Right. You know how much shame that is in the Jewish culture? So God had to find a woman who was of such a spirit who can deal Amen. with all of that ridicule. Right. Who can deal with all of that persecution. Yeah. Who can deal with all of the all of the talking and all the things that her son would have to go through. Amen. Is that right? Yeah. Because sometimes when people talk about our children, we, we about to go away. <laughs> Is that right? She had people doing something. And guess what? She had to be of a quiet spirit. Watch this. She had to be of a, a quiet spirit because she couldn't, couldn't reveal that he was the son of God. I can see some of y'all now talking, well, you better not mess with me. My son is God. I'm going to go get, I'm going to call my son. You don't want me to get my son. Is that right? And she had to be humble enough to listen to her son. Amen. You remember at the wedding, wedding at Cana? That's right. Jesus had to lightly rebuke his mom. Amen. He had to tell her, woman, my time has not come yet. Right. That's what he said. And then she had the, the spirit and the, the, the meekness to say, whatever he tells you to do, do it. Right. Is that right? Yes, Mary was a highly favored woman. But understand, ladies, it wasn't because of how she looked right. or what she had on. The Bible again says, I want to put the scripture on what I said earlier, 1 Samuel 16, 7. 1 Samuel 16, 7 says, For the Lord seeth not as man seeth. For man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. Is that right? That's what it says. The Lord looketh on the heart. You see, the question is, as, as we close, the question for you and I this morning is, 
Are we primarily seeking to appear well in the sight of men or the sight of God? In other words, who are you trying to impress? Is that right? And when God looks at you and I, what does he see? Is that right? Does he see value? Does he see a spirit of great price? Or does he see someone still just trying to be something in the world well, well, and try to be pleasing in the sight of men? Mm -hmm. We need to think about this. Proverbs 31 and 30 says favor or charm is deceptive. And beauty is vain. But a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. Is that right? I thank God for godly women. Amen. I thank God for you. Amen. I want you to turn with me to the book of Luke chapter 11. As we close, Luke chapter 11. Because I know that today is the day that the world has set aside for us to honor our mothers. Amen. And the Bible still commands that we are to give honor to whom honor is due. Amen. So let's do that. Let's honor our mothers. Let's respect and, and, and honor our sisters. Amen. 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 Let's honor our daughters. Let's honor women as a whole, brothers. Yes, sir. Amen. amen. Can you say amen again? Because it amazes me how a man can have a daughter or a sister oh, and be on. so protective and so loving, amen. but treat other women, a, a girlfriend or a spouse, like, like dirt. Amen. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Yes, amen. But he doesn't want his daughter to be treated like that. He'll go to prison even to protect his sister. But yet he can turn around and do the same thing. We need to check ourselves. Paul told Timothy, treat the older women as mothers and the younger women as sisters. Amen. Amen. And I'm speaking to the church, brothers. Come on, bro. Treat, pre treat the older women as mothers right. and the younger women as sisters. Amen. Right. Amen. We're not coming in here to see what sister so-and-so got on. All right. Amen. Amen. That's my sister. All right. That's my mother. All right. Amen. I know that's not popular, but I'm going to say it anyhow, Sister Morel. Amen. That's right. Sometimes we go to, to worship looking to get a hookup. But I'm here to tell you, as long as you have that mindset, you're going to get hooked up all right. Hooked up and burned up. Amen. But let me get to this. I'm, I'm going to close. I know all y'all people got our things to go through out and everything, right? Yeah. Wow. I'm going to get the rust gets there. Luke chapter 11, 27 and 28. Watch this. Watch Jesus. And this is not disrespect. This is just showing what's really important, all right? The Bible says, And it came to pass as he spake these things, a certain woman of the company lifted up her voice and said unto him, Blessed is the womb that bear thee in the patch which thou hast sucked. Right. Is that right? In other words, she's, she's giving glory to, to his mother. Right. And, and Mary deserved honor. Amen. But true honor and all honor belongs to God. Right. Watch what Jesus said. Jesus said what he said. Yea, rather blessed are they that hear the word of God right. and keep. So I thank God today for, for the mothers. 
I thank God today for the women. Amen. But most of all, I thank God for him and his word. Is that right? Amen. This morning, if you're here and you have not obeyed the gospel, we want to give the invitation, the greatest invitation that has ever been made to come. You've heard the word. Do you believe it? Do you believe it enough to repent of your sin? Jesus said in Luke 13, 3, unless you repent, you should all likewise perish. And then be willing to confess Jesus as the Son of God. Romans 10, 9 and 10, confession. With the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. It means you're not there yet, but you're on your way. Is that all right? Yeah. And then the final act of the plan of salvation and, and getting added to the body of Christ, amen, is obedience in baptism. Acts 2, 38. Amen. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus amen. for the remission of sin, and you shall receive, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Yes, right? Understand that without baptism, your sins are not forgiven. And you don't receive the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Wherever you are in your life, whatever circumstances that you have going on, amen, we're here with you to pray with you and pray for you as we together stand and sing the words of encouragement.